good morning and i hope you had a fabulous halloween by the time this goes out it will be past halloween today is the first of november and yesterday i wasn't feeling at my best so decided to spread my halloween halloween celebrations my halloween sawin celebrations over two days instead so yesterday i took it fairly easy but i did our roast squash soup that we always have at Halloween. I made that and I will try and find the link for it and post it in the box below. And we had locally made bread from Eviedale Bakery. And I made a apple crumble where I would normally make an apple pie just to make things a little easier for myself. Feeling much better today. So I'm going to be doing all the things I would have done yesterday today instead. I'm going to put on some suitably Halloweeny nail polish and I am going to get dressed up in some suitably Halloweeny outfit and I still haven't finished knitting my Halloween socks. I have the cuff to finish on the final sock and then I will be putting on my Halloween socks too. Other than that, I don't know, we shall have to see where the day takes me. Well, I've managed to get myself suitably dressed up and attired. Um, I'm still short of my socks. I have the collar, collar, the cuff to finish on the one sock and then I will be perfectly Halloween themed attired. And I will probably record a little bit of video when I finish my socks on the blockers to put in the next podcast so that I can actually wear them and not show them pre-worn on the podcast. I even did my nails. I put little wee pumpkin stickers and little spiderweb sticker and a little graveyard theme. A little graveyard theme on this hand, but they are not going to last five minutes because this sticker will not stay stuck. This sticker will not stay stuck it just keeps lifting but it only has to be for today and a little bit of fun um yeah so on to next little halloween task now that i have some I have my little halloween dress on it even has the hood could have done with this last night because it lashed it down i'm still plugging away at this sock so last night Halloween night, trick or treating. Samhain, if you are of that persuasion. In Gaelic, if you're Scottish, and Gaelic, if you are from Ireland. But in Orkney, known as Devilment Night. And that's because whilst the children are off trick or treating, the older young'uns are off causing devilment. It's, there are legends and stories abound of what the young folks get up to uh, on Halloween night up here. Last night was relatively tame because the weather was very grim. But some did find the time to drive between the two towns of Orkney, Kirkwall and Stromness, which are about a half an hour drive between them and borrow the road signs which have the speed limit as you go drive into the town and welcome to the town's name on and swap them over so Stromness now says welcome to Kirkwell and Kirkwell now says welcome to Stromness little things like that sometimes there can be really not very clever tricks um like um parking half a dozen hair big round hair bales across a road not so clever other times like the time we came back from a halloween event at a friend's house at the other end of the island me and my mum and we drove back rather late a few years ago and got to near to where I live and somebody had stretched cling film between two street signs across the road so obviously I had to hop out the car and take that down so we could drive through 
other times the tricks are really rather clever. My sister's boyfriend Stuart was telling us the other day about an incident a few years ago when two lassies who hadn't long passed their driving test on Devilment Night they went out borrowing folks horse boxes hitched them up to their vehicles and then filled them up with square hay bales and took them to one of the local schools, Doonby School so they borrowed all these horse boxes, filled them all with hay bales, took them all to the car park of the school took all of the hay bales out of the horse boxes and filled the car park up so nobody could get in the car park that was quite amusing or oh, I think it was two years ago some young'uns had gone round borrowing people's wheelie bins now if that's what we call them in the UK in America they'd be like big garbage bins with wheels on that can like drag them and they had borrowed folks bins and collected them all up together and deposited them um, I don't know if it was on somebody's drive or at somebody's farm in Sandwick and they had like, all these wheelie bins on their property that they've been delivered there overnight in the night I've heard stories of entire picnic benches being picked up and put on top of telephone boxes and such like uh, things like that so yeah it's devilment night in all me but with the weather being so bad I don't think a huge amount was done last night certainly not too disruptive John's bus parked at the school wasn't tampered with which he was a little concerned about. I know one of his work colleagues was. I guess he'll hear today, this afternoon, the gossip at the school gates as to what happened with that one. But yeah, devilment night, tricks night. It's usually pretty harmless, mostly. The roast pumpkin soup I made last night is this recipe. I will post the link below, but I thought I would show my adaptations to the recipe on here and explain a little bit too. Basically what I do is I do all of the soup and all these extra bits I ignore because I've made it a couple of times with all this and it is much better without. These make it very cloying, um, not so nice. You really lose the really yumminess of the soup if you add all these extra bits. I guess you could add croutons if you really wanted to, but don't bother with the creme fraiche or the cheese. I really don't recommend it. And I usually use butternut squash, like a whole butternut squash in place of this pumpkin. It's really, really simple. It's. I've just realised I didn't pour any milk in mine last night. I just used stock. I think it was really rather nice for just the stock. But I guess if I was using butternut squash, the milk would be nice because butternut's quite sweet but because I used one of these squash instead these are not as sweet as the butternut I have found they are much more like a regular winter squash it was still nice it was still really creamy and yummy and really filling but I guess if I was using the sweet butternut squash the milk would be better to cut through the sweetness but it's certainly I mean I forgot last night but it certainly didn't need it with the regular squash. So that's what I use, but I will post the link to the recipe below as well. Having made this last night, of course, I have no idea what I'm doing for tea tonight. Uh, I'm kind of a little nervous about cooking on a gas hob wearing this much in the way of man-made fibres. Hmm, sounds like a recipe for disaster, actually. I have finished them. This one. Still needs the ends woven in, which I'll be doing in a moment. And this one I have done, and I will talk about them more on the next episode of the podcast. And I have done one jack-o'-lantern. And if I take this one off of here, two jack-o'-lanterns. So I have two with opposite contrast toes, heels and colour work. So now I'm going to finish weaving in the ends on the second one and I'm going to finally put these on my feet.